Hi, welcome back to the shop. If this is your first time here, I'd invite you to please like and subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications for future videos. And today I'm going to share with you how I make what I call wine glass rack bottle toppers. It's a small wine glass rack that'll hold either two glasses or four glasses, and they sit on top of a wine bottle. They make nice gifts. Uh, I've given a couple as a wedding gift or a housewarming gift, and I'll share with you how I uh, rough cut my pieces and some of the species of exotic hardwoods that I use to make these. So let me just move the camera and I'll show you how I select the woods and match them up for color. Here I have some selections laid out. These are three different toppers. These two will be two glass holders. This one is going to be a four glass holder. So the way I do these, there always has to be an odd number of pieces to get glued up. So in this one, I have, this is called Paduk or Padok, depending on how you say it. Then I have maple, I have purple heart, this is bird's eye maple, and then it repeats in the other direction. This one, which is also for two, two wine glasses, this is Peruvian walnut. This one is also Paduke. This is maple, yellow heart, and red heart. And then it repeats in the opposite direction. This is going to be a four glass rack so it's wider, they're all the same length. This is Peruvian walnut, this is canary wood, yellow heart, red heart, and maple. And once again, the red heart is the centerpiece. So I'll show you how I glue them up, what my process is, and then we'll get ready to plane them after they're glued. I'm ready to start gluing up the first one. When I make these, I only use Type Bond 3. It's waterproof. Anything I make that's going to be around water, whether it's one of these toppers or it's a, a charcuterie board or a cutting board, anything that's going to be around water uses this glue. None of these should be uh, put into a dishwasher They should only be rinsed off with a damp Sponge and allowed to dry. I Do glue on both sides of every piece. You can never have enough glue And I use the old-fashioned spreader my favorite one I've tried using brushes and unless I have uh, nooks and crannies that I'm trying to get the glue into where I need a brush, I prefer to use my finger. And when you put glue on both sides, you know, of each piece, you get a nice, uh, uh, even distribution of your glue. And you can always clean up anything that squeezes out. So... This is my process. Try to line up one side pretty accurately because these are going to be trimmed to length anyway when you finish. When you tighten, sometimes depending on how hard you tighten the clamps, the pieces may try to lift up and you get a bow. I just tap them down, check them, tap them down against the clamp, oh. 
that's it they're nice and flat give them a little squeeze one more clamp And I'll put this one aside. Before I set it aside to dry, you always want to try to get off as much of this glue as you can before it dries. It'll come off in the planer, but as much as you can get off keeps you a little bit ahead of the curve. That's it. I'll put this one aside and glue up the next one. And now I have to leave them sit overnight to dry. Uh, one little tip when you're using this Type Bond Ultra 3 or Ultimate 3, don't get it on your clothes. It doesn't come out. Good morning. Tomorrow is today, so it's time to get the clamps off my work pieces. There we are. So the next process is going to be to plane these, get them all nice and flat, and then I'll cut them to length. I have my planer all set up, and we're ready to start planing these all down to a nice even size. As always with all my videos, I put links below to any equipment that I use, and anything that I use is also uh, available through my webpage which is oldshedworkshop.com. Please take a run over there and you can get a look at the website. Any of these marks left behind by the glue and the clamps will come right off. <laughs> That's it. First one's done. Okay, I'm all set up. Ready for the next one. That's it for planing. Okay, here we have all three of the work pieces uh, finally planed. And you can see now how the colors are starting to come out. Maybe get an idea of why I try to pick color matches the way I do. I like the walnut with the canary wood. I like the yellow heart with the canary wood and the walnut. And I try to create a theme where the colors kind of blend in nicely together. So now I'm going to set up my sled and I'm going to cut all the pieces to length. So I'm set up now with my sled. I want to explain what I'm going to do uh, because it's going to get pretty loud. Uh, I have a remote control for my two-stage dust collection system. I got this at Home Depot for about 20 bucks comes in a three pack got that a couple of years ago if you haven't seen my video on how to build a two-stage dust collection system I'll put a link up at the top
it probably makes sense now how when I was doing the glue up, I mentioned I try to keep one edge fairly straight. That's so when I have to clean off to make a straight edge, I make that first cut to make a clean edge. I don't have a lot of waste because I've kept them relatively straight. I'm marking out the spots to drill the holes for the glasses. I've already marked the centers of all three work pieces with a straight edge. So I need to be here. Flip around. It's a great tool when you're marking out detailed cut lines or drill spots. Great handy device. Okay, now I'm laying out the, the four holes for the glasses for the larger piece. One. Okay, now that everything's marked, we move over to the drill press. As I mentioned before, if you haven't seen my video on my two-stage dust collection system and how I built it, this is just to show you that I also have dust collection on my uh, drill press. And I'll show you how that ends up lining up. Just runs along the floor. This is just shop vac hose. It goes to a four inch dust collection hose right up to the blast gate and into the two stage dust collection system. Now with a stop set over here to butt up against I can drill the first hole for a glass and then flip it around using the stop and you drill the second hole. Next piece is set up. I've readjusted the fence and set the stop. Now I'm going to set up the last piece that has holes for four wine glasses. Since all four holes are equally spaced, I'll be able to cut all four holes without moving the fence just by butting up against the stop block. I have my router table all set up and ready to go. Once again, you'll see that I have dust collection set up for the router table as well. And all these things that I use in any of my jigs or any of my consumables, I put links down below. Any of these things are also available to find on my website, oldshedworkshop.com. If you go into tools and supplies, you'll find a list of all the tools I use and supplies I used in all of my videos. So let's round over these holes.
Okay. Now it's off to the bandsaw. We'll leave the router table set up the way it is. I'll be coming back to that when I do the small uh, two glass holders. It's a little uh, trick, a little something special to share. Bandsaw is all set up. Dust collection is all set up. On to the next step. Now, as I do the two glass holders, you're going to see what I referred to earlier, something special, a little trick that I have here. Now you can see all three work pieces are ready to be sanded. The two glass pieces, I told you there was a little secret there was something special. I use this. I determine the arc that I want. I determine the distance from the holes and then I lay the arc out. Everybody does them straight. If you want to be different, you got to give them some character. So I'm going to touch these up with a little bit of sanding first to get the arc nice and round now that it's cut. And then I'll meet you back at the uh, router table. You can see now that I just have the roundness of the arc just smoothed off nice and even. Just enough. Now we're going to turn on the router and round over the edges. Okay, as I'm sure you heard and, and could see, I had some tear out. This is red hot, and sometimes you get this on the edge, it can be brittle. It's not a big deal, it's fixable. All you have to do is go back and adjust the distance in the opening, and it all comes out in the sanding. So now, off to do some sanding, and I'll see you back again when it comes time for the finish. All the sanding is complete now. A fine sand that I'm out to 220. And now it's time to apply the finish. This is what I use. It's uh, walrus oil, cutting board oil. I'll leave a link to that down below. And I would ask that if you do decide to make any purchases from any of the links I've left below, I'd really appreciate it if you used my link to go to Amazon to make that purchase. As an Amazon affiliate, I do get a very small commission if my link is the link that brings you over to Amazon. 
every little bit helps. Remember, as you're finishing these, the whole process that it took, it's a very time-consuming, tedious process to make these. Remember, we started out on the table saw. I had the pieces cut to size, rough size, when we started. From the table saw, we go to the glue-up. From glue-up, when the clamps come off, we went to the planer. From the planer, we marked out all the holes to drill. You can see this really starting to come alive now. So after the drill press, we went to the bandsaw, cut all the slots. From the bandsaw, we went back to the router table. So it is a time consuming process, but you know, you wanna do great work. Great work isn't cheap and cheap work isn't great. So don't be afraid to charge what you're worth if you're selling these. And I'm sure people will be uh, very happy to receive these as gifts. They do make a beautiful gift. I'll take a chance here to show you. I do lay them out to dry and typically what I do is I put them on these Try grips. These are my uh, bench biscuits, and I usually put a piece of uh, towel on them. So this is what they look like when they're finished with the oil. It's beautiful. They come out really nice. So we'll put that one aside to dry, and get on to the next one. You can see how quickly these colors just pop to life. You don't need a lot of the oil. It goes a long way. And the wood will draw it right in like a sponge, the first coat. I usually like to do a couple of coats. The, the colors in this wood just start to really pop. You can even see in the bird's eye maple, you can see the bird's eyes starting to pop. You don't have to get too crazy on the first coat. Lay it on there pretty good because you're going to do it again. So you don't have to be too crazy worrying about if you have too much. It's all going to soak in. So that's it for the first coat on that one. We'll give you a look at what that one looks like with wine glasses on it. You see it from the side. So we'll take that one off. We'll go to the the four glass holder. Put a little bit of oil on. I'd appreciate it if you've taken the time to stay with me here during this project. If you'd subscribe and like. That's what it's all about, right? Doing YouTube videos. So I appreciate everybody that hangs in there and watches my projects. Don't forget the links below and also my, uh, my webpage, oldshedworkshop.com. Any of the links I leave below uh, in any of my videos for any consumables or uh, parts that I use uh, are also available. If you go to my website under tools and supplies, you'll find all the links for all the, all the supplies, whether it be consumables, uh, pieces and parts I use for jigs, uh, everything I use in all of my videos is uh, available under there. You can find links to everything I use. And again, if you use my links, I make a small commission. 
Not much. But every little bit helps. So here's the last one. Remember, you're going to hit this again with another coat, so let it dry. <clears throat> and I'll show you. That's it. You can see how it sits on there nice. Beautiful decoration. I've given these away also as uh, prizes for raffles. It's kind of expensive to give these away, but sometimes for a good cause you do what you gotta do. So thanks for staying with me through the course of this build. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe and like, and we'll see you on the next video.